Welcome back to Bible Reading and Study Guide. Glad you could join me today. We're in the Gospels. We read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and we're into John. This will be the second reading. How's it where you are? It's sunny. It's going to be 50 today. Like, wow. This is January. It's 50. I'll take it. Okay. Here we are. John. Chapter 6. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they? among so many. Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to the disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who has come into the world. Therefore when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he departed again to the mountain by himself, alone. Now when evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was dark, and it was already dark, and Jesus had not come to them. Then the sea arose, because a great wind was blowing. So when they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and drawing near the boat. And they were afraid, but he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they willingly received him into the boat, and immediately the boat was at the land where they were going. Wow. One minute you're in the sea. And you see somebody walking on the water. Gets in the boat, and all of a sudden you're at land. Wow. On the following day, and the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there, except that one which his disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone. However, other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they ate bread, after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me. Not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has sent, has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? <clears throat> Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. That's in Exodus 16. 
Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at that last day. The Jews then complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. They said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Therefore everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate man in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, Most surely I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at that last day. But my flesh is food indeed, my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Well, that must have really got people stirred up, huh? Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is a spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who did not believe, and who would betray him. And he said, Therefore I have said to you <clears throat> that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? <clears throat> Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him, being one of the twelve. Okay, let's see if there's any questions for John chapter 6. What was the work of God for them to do in verse 29? 
to believe on him. Truly believe on him. And Jesus said, I am what? In verse 35. He's the bread of life. When Jesus asked the disciples if they wanted to leave him like many others, what did Peter say? Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? We've come to believe that you are the Christ. Okay, John 7. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he did not want to walk in Judea, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. That'd be difficult, wouldn't it? Your own brother? That would be difficult. Then Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it, that its works are evil. You go up to this feast. I am not yet going up to this feast, for my time has not yet fully come. Then he said, when he said these things to them, he remained in Galilee. But when his brothers had gone up, then he also went up to the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much complaining among the people concerning him. Some said, He is good. Others said, No, on the contrary, he deceives the people. However, no one spoke openly for fear of the Jews. Now about the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How does this man know letters, having never studied? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. Okay. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory, but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, yet none of you keeps the law? Why do you seek to kill me? The people answered and said, You have a demon. Who is seeking to kill you? Jesus answered and said to them, I did one work, and you all marvel. Moses therefore gave you circumcision, not that it was from Moses, but from the fathers. And you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath so that the law of Moses should not be broken, are you angry with me because I made a man completely well on the Sabbath? Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Now some of them from Jerusalem said, Is this not he whom they seek to kill? But look, he speaks boldly, and they say nothing to him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is truly the Christ? However, we know where this man is from, but when the Christ comes, no one knows where he is from. Then Jesus cried out as he taught in the temple, saying, You both know me, and you know where I am from, and I have not come of myself. But he who sent me is true, whom you do not know, but I know him. I'm from him, and he sent me. Therefore they sought to take him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. And many of the people believed in him, and said, When the Christ comes, will he do more signs than these which this man has done? The Pharisees heard the crowd murmuring these things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then Jesus said to them, I shall be with you a little while longer, and then I go to him who sent me. You will seek me and not find me, and where I am, you cannot come. Then the Jews said among themselves, Where does he intend to go that we shall not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What is this thing that he said, 
You will seek me and not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Therefore many from the crowd, when they heard this saying, said, Truly, this is the prophet. Truly, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Will the Christ come out of Galilee? Has not the scripture said that Christ comes from the seed of David and from the t town of Bethlehem where David was? Isn't that where he was born? So there was a division among the people because of him. Now some of them wanted to take him, but no one laid hands on him. When the officers came to the chief priests and the Pharisees who said to them, Why have you not brought him? The officer said, No man ever spoke like this man. Then the Pharisees answered them, Are you also deceived? Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd that does not know the law is cursed. Nicodemus, he who came to Jesus by night, being one of them, said to them, Does our law judge a man before it hears him and knows what he is doing? And they answered and said to him, Are you also from Galilee? Search and look. For no prophet has risen out of Galilee. And everyone went to his own house. So they all went home. Okay. Does Jesus, or did Jesus' siblings believe in him? Verses 1 through 5. They didn't, did they? What did people think of Jesus when he claimed there were people wanting to kill him? In verse 20. That is crazy, right? And what were the rivers of living water Jesus talked about in 38 and 39? In 39 it says, But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. So the rivers of living water was coming from the Holy Spirit that they would eventually those who believing in him would receive. John 8. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery, whom they had set, in her, set her in the midst. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Okay. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. It doesn't say what he wrote. There's a lot of speculation. but So they were watching him write. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Then he spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Wow. The Pharisees therefore said to them, to him, You bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, Even if I bear witness of myself, 
I went, this is true. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from and where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. And yet, if I do judge, my judgment is true. For I'm not alone, but I'm with the Father who sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. Then they said to him, Where is your father? Jesus said, You know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. These were Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away and you will seek me and will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. So the Jews said, will he kill himself because he says, where I go, you cannot come? He said to them, you are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Then they said to him, who are you? And Jesus said to them, Just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he. Lift up that Son of Man. Remember, that was in chapter 3. And in numbers. When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things. And He who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please Him. As He spoke these words, many believed in Him. <laughs> then Jesus said to those Jews who believed Him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. They answer him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, the son makes you free. You shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have seen with your father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham, but now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar, and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin. And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore you do not hear because you are not of God. Then the Jews answered and said to him, Do we not rightly say that you are a Samaritan and you have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. And I do not seek my own glory, 
there is one who seeks and judges. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Then the Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And you say, If anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death? Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets who are dead? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old. Have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham, before Abraham was, I am. You can check out Exodus 3.14 regarding that phrase. I am. Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and passed by. So we escape again. And that was eight. Jesus said, I am what? In verse 12. He's the light of the world. So now he's the, the bread and he's the light, right? And who will walk in the light? Those who believe in him, right? Who follows him. Yeah. Not just a head acknowledge, but actually following him. Who will know the truth and be made free? And that's in 31 and 32, right? If you abide my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. The truth shall set you free. So those who abide in his word. And what serious offense did Jesus commit that caused the Jews to try to stone him? In 58 and 59. And then here it says, see Exodus 3.14. He said, I am. They took up stones to throw at him. Because Jesus said, I am. And that's what God said back in Exodus. Who, who, Moses wanted to know who was going to send him. He's going to talk to the people to deliver them from Egypt. What is your name? And he said, I am. Jesus used that same phrase. Who? They got angry. That was blasphemy. John 9. Now Jesus passed by. So when they, let's go back to 8 for a minute. They thought it was blasphemy. They didn't know that Jesus was speaking the truth. That he was the I am. Okay. John 9. Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus said, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me, while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. <laughs> that must have been quite a sight. Therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. The others said, He is like him. He said, I am he. Therefore they said to him, How are your eyes opened? And he answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I received my sight. 
And they said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought him, who formerly was blind, to the Pharisees. Uh-oh, now it was the Sabbath. When Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also asked him again how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Therefore some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So the Pharisees, some were beginning to wonder. And they said to the blind man again, What do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him who had received his sight. And they asked him, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, that he was born blind. But by what means he now sees, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. He is of age. Ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews agreed, had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was the Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. The first parents said, He is of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, Give God the glory, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Then they said to him again, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? <laughs> then they reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we do not know where he's from. The man answered and said to them, why, this is a marvelous thing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, for if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, you are completely born in sins, and are you teaching us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when they had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see. And those who see may be made blind. And some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see. Therefore, your sin remains. What upset the Pharisees about the healing of the blind man? What is the same thing? Is he mad? Are they mad because he healed him? No, not because he healed him. But the key is he healed him on the Sabbath, right? Okay, I thought I was going to read on to the next chapter, but we are not. That's it for today's reading, and it's the end of that that um, chapter in our study guide that we're using. Um, be sure to check it out on Amazon if you would like. The link is in the banner book, or there's also a link to a free version. Exact same thing, but it's not interactive or something you can, you know, write on or type in. 
You could print it off if you wanted to. That's up to you. It's free to do. But anyway, it's great to have a study guide to kind of keep us focused. Okay, as you read what Jesus said about himself in the second lesson of John, consider your ideas about him and what you have been taught. Are they the same thing? Is your concept of Jesus the same as you read in the Bible? We've been told a lot of things. And we kind of found, formed our own opinion or whatever, what we think. But is what it says in the Bible the same? Is your concept of Jesus the same as you read in the Bible? How does the Lord's Prayer in Matthew, remember the Lord's Prayer? Compared to his prayer in the book of John. So we're going to find that out next time because we're going to start. In John 7, or John 7, John 10, and continue on from there this next time. All right? So, have a blessed day.